Old Wild thanks Mr. Lin for his guidance over the years, then starts conjuring something, saying that this is the token of his gratitude. It was a gargoyle that Old Wild received from his teacher after graduating. Gargoyle's power is that it can identify murderous intent by itself, and it has great magic resistance. Mr. Lin thinks Old Wild thinking that this token of gratitude is really valuable and that it took a lot of craft to make it because it looks as if it is alive. Other, and Old Wild thinks to himself that one book from Mr. Lin could buy thousands of these gargoyles, that it's not that special. As Old Wild is leaving and saying goodbyes to Mr. Lin, he also says that he will give him, uh, a better gift next time, one that is worthy of an indescribable power. Mr. Lin says he can't wait. While saying goodbye to Old Wild after Old Wild left, Mr. Lin is thinking to himself, what kind of a gift could he give me? Maybe another one of these gargoyles? As Mr. Lin stretches, saying that that's all the work for today, he notices a black goo rising on his table. The goo spells out letters, long time no see. And Mr. Lin screams in shock, that's you. Mr. Lin realizes that this is the demon that sent Mr. Lin to this underground realm and tells him that it has been three years since they last talked and asks if it's the time for Mr. Lin to pay the price for the favor that the demon has provided him. Mr. Lin thinks that this demon is actually quite friendly since it had already helped him and fulfilled his biggest wish. Thus, Mr. Lin is not expecting the demon to ask for a big price. Then the demon sends a message saying that the price has already been paid and is actually the reason why the demon has awoken. Mr. Lin was surprised, starts thinking, what did he do that made him pay the price already? Um, maybe because he let Old Wild recommend the book to someone. The demon responds by writing letters yes. Out of the black goo on the table, Mr. Lin asked the demon if the price he just paid somehow benefits the demon, and demon responded with yes. Again, Mr. Lin, relieved, says that there will be no issues then, since the price has already been paid. But Mr. Lin is suspicious because it was too easy. Now we see the man named Jack on a building balcony, while the rain is still falling heavily. Jack is a mysterious man for now, but is a part of some special force unit. He receives a message over his radio that they have found the whereabouts of Old Wild, and that Old Wild just spent an hour in that bookstore. Jack gets suspicious and thinks to himself that this bookstore is maybe a hidden gathering spot for the black mages. The woman on the other side of the radio gets surprised and says she has to report to Joseph and calls Jack back to provide more info. And yes, Joseph is the guy Old Wild mentioned earlier in the story that he suffered a terrible loss to. Jack confirms the order and says he will return back. But at that moment, we can see Old Wild himself behind Jack saying there's a rat and attacking him. Jack pulls out a knife to stab Old Wild, but before he does it, Old Wild grabs his face, utters a magic word, loses his life in the blink of a knife. Woman on the radio calls for Jack, but Old Wild stomps on the radio, destroying it and saying that they should never spy on his place of residence. Thinking about Miss Celine, of course, and saying that the punishment Jack has just received was too merciful for this transgression. Now we go back to headquarters Jack was supposed to report to, and we see that woman knocking on the door of a special knight, saying she had something to report to. Knight chilling in his chair, telling the woman whose name is Chloe to come in. The knight asks if something happened to the spawn of the magic mirror, and says that those hunters are so annoying, get so pissed and while punching the table says he'll use the tombstones of their mothers as punching bags. Chloe, a little bit scared, says she has a new case for this night. Knight asks what's more important than what Old Wild is doing, and she reports on Jack's just losing his life a couple of years ago and says that he just discovered where Wild was before getting assassinated. The knight gets utterly furious asking who did this, and then Chloe says it was Old Wild's doing. They thought he lost his life after the Battle of White Hills two years ago, but apparently he survived. The knight says he knew Old Wild survived and uh, that nobody knows Old Wild better than him and says that the finally old pest has come out of the sewer. Old Wild is in knocking region, however, and asks what he was doing at the 23rd Street, the street where the bookstore of Mr. Lin is. Cody says that the report is limited since Jack didn't make it back to give a full report but they know that Old Wild spent an hour in the bookstore. The knight gets angry saying that it makes no sense for a black mage who uses words for his magic to go to a bookstore and asks if there is any background check on the bookstore.
Claudi says that bookstore is flagship of Ash 3 Merchant Group and is open for three years now. It has a good reputation but not many customers, and that the only thing about the bookstore that is a little bit OD is the owner who is not local. The knight says that the Ash 3 Merchant Group belongs to the druids who follow nature and forests, and that he doubts they have anything to do with the black mages. That, the knight doubts that the bookstore is the gathering place of mages. The knight gets completely pissed, then runs towards Claudia and asks her what is the mission of their order of knights. Claudia, in a trembling voice, responds to eradicate evil and bring peace. The knight says that they cannot tolerate anyone who stands for evil or works with those who stand for evil, saying that Vile didn't stay in the bookstore only to chat, read a book, and drink some tea, while these are precisely the reasons why Old Wild stayed there. The knight continues yelling in anger, saying that if Claudia really thinks this, that an immensely powerful black mage stayed at a bookstore for an hour only to do that, then he will need to put on the sharp mithril boots and kick Claudia a few times, so she learns her lessons. Claudia, quivering in fear, says that the Ash Tree group of merchants who own the bookstore as well fund 40% of their operation as well. As his mistake exhales and says that he will go to the bookstore himself to check out what's the big deal about this bookstore. As he's leaving his base, we can see many, many knights in a line greeting him honorably. He looks at the record of Lin Yi, saying he will personally get to see what kind of a being Lin is. Then we find out the name of the knight, Joseph Abraham. He was one of the ten radiant knights, and a knight that beat Old Wild terribly once already. As the chapter draws to an end, Sir Joseph starts hallucinating again, seeing bright red light everywhere. And as a magic sword appears in front of him, Sir Joseph utters the curse of the magic sword. Candela, we see Joseph drowning and falling deeper and deeper in water, demon tendrils wrapping around him, and even an illusion of a mysterious man trying to choke him out. Joseph snaps back out of the hallucination, and he's on a rainy street close to Mr. Link's bookstore. Joseph is talking to himself, saying that the curse of the sword candle activated again, and that's why he can't go visit the bookstore now. This is a, uh, madness possessed by its original owner. This curse can drive people mad with hallucinations, and only extremely powerful knights can withstand this curse with their tremendous willpower. But the curse is activating again, before Joseph could find a suitable successor for the blade. Joseph thinks to himself that he is no undefeatable sacred knight, since he can't withstand this curse anymore. He's just an old cripple. Down the street without going to the bookstore. Now we see drained corpses of enemies who attack the girl from the beginning of the novel, and the man in robes whose name is Helix, and who's a leader of the White Wolf clan. And Helix is saying that he underestimated the girl. After all, she was second in command, so it's understandable that she is not weak. And, uh, we see the girl again standing in front of a burning building, and we get to learn more about her. Second in command of the White Wolf, Glan, the clan Helix is the current leader of, and her name is Ji Zinsu. We see more enemies charging at her from behind, but she dismantles them without betting an eye, then asks Max to report on the situation. Now, uh, we can see Max on the rooftop saying that it's confirmed that Helix has become a total madman after receiving the spawn of the magic mirror and that he has started a massacre among the hunters. Max warns Ji that they are outmatched since Helix has allied with Casper, who's third in command. Now we see another woman named Kay approach them, saying that Helix and Casper have probably planned this assault a long time ago, and that they are too powerful right now. Then she tells G that she got betrayed only because of that scheming bastard Lee, then thanks Kay, saying that the only reason why she survived the pursuers was thanks to Kay. Thinks about Kay being really impressive since she can suppress the side effects of the tainted blood, meaning even when she's transformed, she can retain complete control which is impossible for regular hunters. Now, uh, we see a man known as Rat Ryan screaming that Helix and Casper are close to panicky level and that after Liam K transform, they can defeat them easily. K absolutely despises R.E.T. Ryan, but G said that they can trust him since he has a loyalty rune marked onto his soul. G then explains that K and Max are able to withstand the mind corruption of the magic mirror because that rune has been casted by the White Mage that proceeds to explain that all of them have tainted blood, and that hunting that cruel dream beast 
is a path they all chose to have. She lets out a battle cry, telling her hunters that there is no turning back now they agree and follow her instructions. Saying that this is going to be their last battle, they reach the church gate, which they break open and enter. Inside, they find third-in-command Casper, and they get surprised asking where is Helix, and why is Casper alone? Casper laughs while G rushes towards him, suspecting that something is wrong. After flipping him over, she realizes he has started transforming and takes a syringe to inject into him to slow down his transformation. Asks, where is Helix? And Casper, while still transforming, screams his holiness will come. Um, then Casper explodes, ending his own life. G, completely shocked and angry, breaks the glass mirror while Max is asking her that they should ask Mr. Keywood for help. But G quickly declines Max's offer and gives an order to Gay to continue investigating. She then orders Ryan to follow her, and shocked, he asks, where? She utters to 23rd Street. Now we see our protagonist, Mr. Lim, sitting in his bookstore, drinking coffee and reading a book while thinking to himself that today is another day without customers, since old Wild Aang it's been three days without any customers. He then thinks to himself that he's only scraping by because of that black lady who is financing the bookstore. And Lin hopes that the book he recommended, this black lady, can be of any help to her. He thinks that he should devise strategies how to share books better, since he's probably not getting any customers with weather being as bad as it is today. And in that moment, somebody enters the bookstore. It's Miss G dressed in a beautiful dress, which leaves Mr. Lin a bit surprised but he happily welcomes her in. He then remembers that she's a daughter of a rich tycoon, and that, uh, this is his jazz to make his business prosper by making her his regular customer. He tells her that he didn't expect her to come back so soon, and that she is the first person ever to visit his bookstore after only three days. G is thinking to himself that Mr. Lin is disappointed in her, and after giving her such a great guidance the last time, she still came back to him, um, asking for more help. She then notices the gargoyle that Mr. Lin received from Old Wild and thinks to herself, if that's the mage's gargoyle. It didn't move. She feels a powerful aura coming from him. She continues thinking about Mr. Lin trying to pretend to be a normal person, but he's displaying this gargoyle. Is he trying to comfort her and treat her with forgiveness and encouragement like before? She then apologizes to Mr. Lin for disappointing him. And in that moment, Rat Ryan enters the bookstore asking G if this is the place where she is taking him. He gets surprised after seeing Mr. Lin and thinking, why did the boss take me to see a normal person? Mr. Lin asks about who this guy is, and she explains telling this is her subordinate, saying that he's completely loyal. Mr. Lin then starts pouring coffee and thinks that she got traumatized by that bastard who G mentioned in the chapter one, and for whom Mr. Lin told her to need to get the revenge against. Lin thinks she was traumatized by this guy so much, because when she introduces other people, she needs to say they are loyal. But then, Mr. Lin realizes that if she took his advice and listened to him and got revenge, she should feel more confident now. And why did she just say she disappointed Mr. Lin? He asks her if she failed doing this and offers her coffee. Ji thinks to herself that even though she didn't say it, Mr. Lin already knows this. So she tells him that yes, she had failed. They're talking about different people. However, G is talking about Helix and wanting to end his life, while, uh, Mr. Lin is thinking that the guy is her ex who betrayed her. G then proceeds to explain that he got away and she couldn't get her revenge. She asked others to search for him, but they couldn't find him yet. And then she fought him for two days. Being Mr. Lin's teachings, she started pushing him back, even explaining, even destroying his base. And even though she paid a heavy price, he still managed to escape because she has underestimated him. She then apologizes to Mr. Lin because she got careless. Mr. Lin, with a happy face, says that it's not her fault. And while he sips his coffee, he gets completely and utterly confused, not realizing what's going on because he is thinking that the guy G is talking about is her ex. Talking about romance like fighting someone. He wonders and thinks there's a saying love is like shopping and shopping is like fighting. So logically, love is like fighting. Ling thinks that she is used to business terminology since her father is at Akun, and that's why she's describing it like that, and he thinks he understands it now.